Are we about to see a triple digit gain in silver? So are we about to see triple digit gains for silver? Well, what we'll do, we'll cut to a clip from the Wealthian channel with Jeff Clark. And I'll put a link in the description below. I highly recommend you guys watch the whole thing and subscribe to the Wealthian channel. Uh, and then we'll come back and I'll share a little blog piece that uh, Jeff also wrote. All right. So let's, I guess, go to that. So quite the rebound. <laughs> Uh, when you say quite the rebound, um, what sort of magnitude are you talking about? Something to take us above the all-time high that we hit in March or back up near it or what? Well, here's, here's what I want to show, Adam. These are a couple of charts that I showed in my talk at VRIC last week. Um, the first one here is basically the biggest and sharpest sell-offs that we've had in gold and silver here over the past 15 years. There you see uh, the sell-off in gold and silver back in 2008, uh, and it only lasted seven months, right? It was a very sharp sell-off. And then during the COVID crash in 2020, you can see how gold and silver sold off then. And then I put in the current sell-off. This, this is from their highs, their recent highs uh, from last year. Uh, you can see that silver is down 16%, gold is down over you know, 9%. Uh, and again, in a relatively short period of time. Now, one thing I'll point out though, Adam, is that gold sold off more than, uh, it, it, it's rebounded here recently, right? So at the bottom of its sell-off here recently, it was the, almost the exact identical amount in percentage loss as it was during the COVID crash of 2020. Now, are you really gonna tell me that, you know, what is happening now in the markets warrants a sell-off in gold to the extent, to the same extent that we had during the COVID crash. I think uh, this hints that the sell-off is overdone. Um, now, I don't necessarily mean that the bottom is in, but what I do mean is that the sell-off is overdone and that it was a very extensive sell-off and that you know we should turn our attention to the rebound. Speaking of that, the second chart I showed was what those rebounds were when gold and silver uh, rebounded from their sell-off. So there you can see in 2008, look at the rebound in silver from being down 57%, rebounding almost 450%, gold from 29, rebounding 166% during the COVID crash. Look at the rebound in silver. There's the rebound in gold. And then there's our current sell-offs in the far right bars there for silver and gold. Those green bars are projections, but all I did there, Adam, was just average the other two rebounds. That's all I did there. I'm not saying that's what they're gonna do. I'm just saying, just showing what it could be if it averaged what the other ones did, so. Really, you sure you're not guaranteeing a 300% <laughs> increase in silver? Right. <laughs> I, I do think that's gonna come. I, I mean, you know, my, my conviction in gold is strong enough that the, the big picture, the fundamental picture for owning gold has not changed whatsoever, despite the past two, three months activity in the price. Therefore, I do expect there to be some kind of rebound, whether it's a sharp rebound or a slow rebound, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be more than a rebound. It's going to be a sustainable, real bull market based on core fundamental reasons that uh, make gold more and more important as we go forward here. So let's check out this blog from Jeff Clark on the goldsilver.com website entitled This Comprehensive Research on the Gold Silver Ratio Gives Us a Big Fat Hint About What's Ahead. So Jeff here says he knows silver investors are discouraged. The price action doesn't reflect what it should be considering inflation's been spiking. He says there's valid reasons for the lag in price such as the soaring US dollar. Uh, perceived drop in industrial demand from a recession or stagflation fears, crashing stock market where it forces investors to liquidate other holdings. Uh, and then he says one of Mike Maloney's strengths is that he views trends through the lens of history. And so he decided to employ a strategy with the gold silver ratio to examine how silver has performed during its biggest declines over the past 50 years to give some insight into what it might do in the next decline. 
And he says, as any silver investor knows, a drop in the ratio means silver is outperforming gold. And he said he just wanted to see by how much. So silver's gains during sharp drops in the gold-silver ratio went back to the early 1970s and logged all major declines in the gold-silver ratio, highlighting each period in a green bar, and then listed the percentage drop in the ratio, gold's performance, and silver's performance. There have been many big drops in the ratio over the past five decades. He excluded smaller and longer periods. So here's the first period from 73 to 97, which includes both bull and bear markets in silver. The charts are tad crowded, but uh, he wanted to provide all the information for each period. You'll notice that of the seven sharp drops in the ratio, silver gained triple digits in four of them and 97% in a fifth one. Only in two did it log a small gain. It's also noteworthy that the 83 and 87 periods occurred during bear markets. Silver's biggest performance was 79 to 80 during its blow-off move to the all-time high of $50, where the ratio fell from 40 to 17 in one year. Here are the sharp drops from 97 to present. Of the five major declines in the gold-silver ratio, the silver price gained triple digits in three of them and 80% gains in the other two. The biggest outperformance was in 2011, leading up to its blow-off top to the $49 range, where the ratio fell from 70 to 32. Now there's another message in this data. There have been 12 major declines in the gold-silver ratio over the past 50 years, along with a bunch of smaller ones. This historical record on its own suggests another one is virtually inevitable. May not feel like it at the moment, but I'll bet a lot of silver investors have felt that way before, right before it suddenly took off again. And this is without considering the monetary shifts that Mike has talked a lot about, which haven't really kicked into high gear yet. So is a triple, triple digit gain ahead for silver? That's what happened in almost every past bull market when the ratio dropped sharply. The next green bar could be very interesting. Our job is to stay vigilant and prepared for the next spike in the silver price. And this is where I talk about Wayne Gretzky skating to where the puck is going, not to where the puck has been. So recently I did this video, gold silver mine ratio now seven to one. And in the video, I talked about the gold silver ratio. I talked about how I look at the gold silver ratio, how I use it. I don't trade in between gold and silver based on the ratio, but what I do is I use it to help me determine which metal I am buying more of at a particular time. Uh, but what I also spoke about in this video, and I'll put a link in the description below if you haven't watched it, uh, I, I talk about how I use uh, gold and silver and measure it against other assets. And in 2021, I did this video, Well Cycles, where I shared my own personal story, where I turned $68,000 into almost $800,000. And so this is measuring gold and silver versus other assets. So in 2008, 2009, uh, I bought uh, silver worth about $68,000. And in 2011, I started selling uh, silver at, in the $40, $40 uh, region. And I bought US properties. Now I had a bit of luck and you know, you'll, you'll hear what that luck was in this video if you haven't yet watched it. Uh, but I started buying US properties. Well. What have I been doing in the last 12 months? I've been selling those US properties because I've made tremendous gains. One, uh, the on the currency, uh, the currency was a, a dollar four at the time. Now the currency is sitting around 70, 72 US cents. And you know the properties have tripled in value from, from when I bought them. So we use wealth cycles to, to do that. So we measure our gold and silver versus other assets. Now in our opinion, we see another setup that's likely. So in our, our portfolio, yes, we're still sitting on a lot of US dollars uh, because the dollar milkshake theory does make a lot of sense to me. Uh, and it's not just Brent Johnson. Uh, one of my favorite all-time investors, Jim Rogers, is also sitting on a lot of US dollars. He says he doesn't like US dollars, but he understands the Euro dollar system. And when there's a liquidity system, uh, uh, sorry, a liquidity event happening, that there will be a global run on the US dollar and the US dollar will spike. And at that point, he'll sell his US dollars and buy other real assets. And 
that's similar similar thing to myself. And I do see that playing out, but that's just a percentage of my portfolio. I am heavily invested in physical gold and silver. I own more physical gold and silver than I ever have before. Uh, you know, I have trimmed, as you guys know, profits in my coal stocks because they have just ripped since 2020. Uh, some of my stocks I've made over, over 10x on my coal stocks. Other coal stocks, based on my buy price, I got like a 58% dividend yield based on my buy price. I bought that that low. Uh, same thing with my oil stocks. So I've been trimming some, some uh, fat off that. And I've been using options. So I've been selling naked puts to buy into some gold uh, producers uh, and silver miners. Uh, you know, so we trade options a lot. We sell options predominantly. So we sell a lot of naked puts, sell a lot of uh, covered calls, uh, strangles. Um, and, you know, but we also uh, buy options. So in March 2020, we bought put options and bear call spreads, made 700, 780% return in two and a half weeks. And we left a lot of profits on the table on that trade. Uh, so we could have made a lot, lot more on that trade in March 2020. So we like when markets crash because we're able to buy bear call spreads and, and buy just straight out put options and, and make profits uh, when there's market crashes. Uh, but we also sell naked puts to enter positions into stocks that we want to own. And at the moment, there's a lot of quality gold and silver stocks that have been belted down. They're, they're, they're 50% uh, on sale at the moment. And so once again, I talk about Wayne Gretzky, skate uh, to where the puck is headed, not to where it's been. And so we see another wealth cycle playing out. We see assets that have been pumped up via debt. So whether that's you know growth stocks, whether that's uh, real estate, uh, as central banks raise rates, we think that those assets have got a long way to fall where other assets that don't have counterparty risk uh, you know, will either hold their value uh, or increase their purchasing power against these other assets. And so we see another wealth cycle event playing out uh, in the months and years ahead. And so we're positioned for that. Uh, you know, we could be wrong. It's not financial advice, uh, but... Once again, I'll put a link in the description of this video if you haven't watched it. Uh, I share my story on you know, wealth cycles uh, and, and how we think that's going to play out again. But once again, not financial advice. That's just how we see the market and how we're positioned. So yes, we've got some cash in US dollars predominantly. Uh, we've got a lot of physical gold and silver. We've got a lot of uh, miners and exploration companies. Uh, I still have some coal stocks. I still have some oil stocks. I still have some other energy plays. They have been trimmed down quite a lot. Uh, but predominantly, we've been doing a lot of options trading. So we have bought some puts. We've we've uh, gone short on a, on a few stocks just recently. But predominantly, we've been selling naked puts to, to, to enter positions or to, to, to create cash flow and, and collect premium. So that's what we've been doing. Um, you know, but what do you guys think? Uh, you know, do you see a triple digit gain in silver around the corner? Do you, do you see another wealth cycle event? Love to see your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. If you like this video, guys, please give that thumbs up, hit that like button. Really do appreciate it. If you haven't yet subscribed, do so. And also hit that notification bell. Take care, everyone. And I'll see you all again on another episode of Finance Uncut.